They probably don't even use social media. They have aides in their congressional offices who do it for them. And, you know, it's uh, it, it's just a shame that that's the kind of representation that we have. It's on both sides of the aisle. And then meanwhile, the same day, you had the Kavanaugh hearings and Chuck Grassley was allowing for these radical leftist women coming in with period blood and crazy signs to disrupt. And what did Chuck Grassley say? He said, well, this is America and they have a First Amendment right to protest. So the Democrats have a First Amendment right to falsely accuse Brett Kavanaugh of rape, but I don't have a First Amendment right to call out Jack Dorsey for committing perjury. Yeah. And it was so pathetic. I'll never forget it. It's one of those things that just burned into my mind. And it, it, and people laughed. And that was the worst part about it is people laughed and they thought it was so funny. And it's not funny because we're watching our lawmakers on both sides of the aisle uh, literally auction off our First Amendment rights. And every single day we're seeing a total erosion of our constitutional rights. And really, it's the First Amendment that makes this country great. So I'm, I'll never forget that day and how... Fox News and CNN and all these so-called free speech warriors online who grift for donations, they, they laughed at it. They thought it was something. Oh, yeah. It, it, it was so rude. And there was a I think that there was a component of sexism and misogyny there as well. And I mean, and, and, and neither of us are, are the type to, to go, you know, invoking that card. Um, you know, frivolously. Imagine if I was black. Like, imagine if I was black. Do you think that a white Republican congressman would get away with auctioning off a black woman on the whole, in the, in, in Congress? Oh, yeah. Great optics, that would have been, right? But no. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, I like, were... say, I like to say, first of all, Billy Long, the only reason why people know him and the only reason why he became famous is because of me. And secondly, I don't think the American people have ever seen him move his mouth that fast since the last. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. it, it's so disgusting and slovenly on so many levels. Yeah, yeah. So when you get to Congress, what's the first thing that you're going to do? Well, I hope that I am appointed to, uh, you know, the committees, which would allow me to do what I would like to do. But uh, I would really like to address what I believe is the most pressing issue in our nation right now and a, the, a serious civil rights violation, and that is the big tech censorship and the silencing of conservatives. I would really like to see our Civil Rights Act um, updated to include a, a political affiliation as a protected class, uh, because this cannot stand any longer. I'm sure that there are already going to be elections that suffer, and there are going to be seats that are lost as a result of tech interference uh, this election cycle. And uh, if we continue to allow you know, Silicon Valley to determine what what truth is and what is and isn't allowed online. I mean, we we are going to have some serious problems. We already have serious problems in this nation. Uh, there's a lot of things I want to do, but uh, I I would make the argument that censorship is the most pressing issue in the world right now, and uh, it's also the reason why we're in the coronavirus pandemic because you know we're we're witnessing something that we've never seen in our society before. Over 3 billion people in the world, are on, that's, that's almost half of the world's population, are on some form of quarantine or lockdown because of this Chinese virus. And what no one wants to talk about is how we got to this position. And it's censorship. Censorship is the reason why millions of Americans have lost their jobs. Because when whistleblower doctors were trying to get on Twitter and they were trying to inform the world about the coronavirus back in January, back in December, and how lethal it was, China was censoring these doctors. China was jailing these doctors. And China probably even killed some of these doctors because some of them have actually uh, died since, uh, since trying to warn the world. And who knows if they died from coronavirus or whether they were murdered by the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, but when you when you really examine why we're in this pandemic and why so many people are suffering, it's because of censorship. And I haven't heard anybody talk about it. I think that's a really brilliant angle. And even as we're speaking, you've got people all over the world. It's not just in the United States. This early this morning, I heard from an Irish journalist, Gemma O'Doherty, who had her Twitter account throttled because she had a video that she had posted of her advertising a lockdown protest in Ireland. The 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 uh, InfoWars guys just a couple of weeks ago who organized the lockdown protests in Texas are no longer on Twitter because of that. 
um, and all of these independent thinking doctors and, and dissidents in the medical medical community who know all about Anthony Fauci. So, I mean, and this goes to exactly the kinds of things that you have been blowing the whistle about for years. It's the broadening of their violation terms of, of uh, service policies from things that are actually incitements of violence to opinions that are just differing from the establishment or that threaten them. That's why you threaten them so much, because you've illuminated it for people. Right. And so when everything becomes um, inc an incitement to violence that is merely or, or, or harassment or bullying, and yet at the same time, and I wanted to remember to bring this up, Facebook is essentially telling people it's okay for you to level death threats against Laura Loomer. Right. So that's the thing, too, is everything that they're accusing people of doing that they're guilty of themselves. And so let's just take the example of, of me and, and why people think I'm banned. There's a lot of people out there who have very strong opinions about me. They have no idea why I was banned. They just look it up online and they say, oh, well, oh, she's an Islamophobe or she's anti-Muslim. If you look at the tweet for, you know, which I was banned for, all I was saying was Ilhan Omar's anti-Jewish. Uh, surely this is something that even the Democrats agree with because it was the Democrat Party that had to propose an anti-Semitism resolution uh, when they decided to, uh, you know, embrace their new hijabi friends on the floor of Congress <laughs> uh, who were, who were, you know, going around destroying our, our relationships with, uh, with foreign leaders, making comments like it's all about the Benjamins and, uh, you know, saying things like, uh, I don't know. You could, you could just, there's so many nasty comments that they've made. And to be totally honest, I'm not even concerned about their comments. I'm more concerned about their actions. The fact that these women are advocating for members of ISIS, they refuse to condemn Hamas. Uh, that's what I think, you know, the focus should really be on. Uh, but they say that I'm anti-Muslim for highlighting these facts, but you want to know who actually is anti-Muslim and actually is hateful? Big tech, because big tech has decided to uh, have this, uh, you know, extensive relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. Okay, they uh, have decided to do all of their manufacturing or majority of their manufacturing in China. And you know what China is doing under the Communist Party? They are putting innocent Muslim Uyghurs in concentration camps. They are sterilizing Muslim women in concentration camps in China. And big tech is well aware of this. And during the coronavirus, something that went entirely unreported uh, when China had to shut down some of their factories, uh, they were like, well, we still have to produce and uh, get a lot of these electronic devices out for big tech. So they actually put Muslim Uyghur slave laborers uh, into the factories during this pandemic uh, to produce these uh, devices and do the manufacturing for big tech. And no one wants to talk about it. That's anti-Muslim. That is hateful. That is, that is what you call bigotry.